So what about knees? Knees are going to be a bit more complicated than elbows. Knees are bigger, they have a lot more mass, they have a lot more variation that happens away from the knee in the case of the calf. So we're going to have a bit of a different rig set up for it. We're going to have basically two bones, but one of the bones is going to have a bunch of children of it, and the other bone is actually going to go off and do some things with the calf. We actually have another little bone here that deals with the patella, but it won't be as big of a deal. So again, if you like what I'm doing, if you want to support me, please head over to filoverivero.gumroad.com. Today we're going to be doing a very simple overview of the bones, their constraints and drivers. I mean, I'll show you everything you need to know, but I won't be setting it up from scratch. If you want to see that, check out the tutorials I've got there. I delete all the bones and I add them one by one, making mistakes, you get to see my thought process, it's all good. I highly recommend going and taking a look at that if you want to understand more. But I will be showing you everything you need to know to set this up here. Okay, so let's start at the top. There is a thigh, a bone going all the way down the thigh, but this is just a mechanism bone or a control bone. It doesn't actually do any deforming, so I call it control thigh L. Uh, there is though another bone at the top and one at the bottom. This one at the bottom here, it will, um, it has a couple of constraints on it. First, it copies the location of the one that's in the top, so it always starts from about here, copies the rotation of the thigh controller, and does that at about a half value here. So that's, uh, that gives it, it copies essentially the IK um, influence that goes up her thigh and up into her um, hips, but it only copies the rotation at about a half. And that's important for the tis bone setup. If you want to understand that, highly recommend going and reading up on it. Final thing is a damp track to the knee, so it always will end here. So it starts about halfway, ends here, copies the rotation by half. Okay, so what does this have as its children? One is this right here, thigh squish mane. So what does thigh squish mane do? It's going to be the parent of these other three bones. One, two, three. They're all children of this one. And this one has a couple of constraints. It does a copy rotation and a stretch too. Um, and then it has also some drivers. So let's start by thinking about what are, what are the constraints on this thing before we start looking at its children. So the constraints again, copy rotation. Why is that? Well, I discovered in certain poses, especially when her legs are pressed together, what happens is the uh, calf will go sort of rotate around on the inside in this case, and it can rotate around on the outside as well. And so what ends up happening then is that thigh controller rotates. This um, whole set of thigh squishing bones are a child of that, so they copy some of the rotation, but not really enough. It feels like they not only rotate around the bone, but in this case, they rotate around the calf, right? If the calf is over here, it causes the thigh to be pushed over here. If the calf is over here, it causes the thigh to be pushed over here. So what I did was I added an extra copy rotation. So I'm copying the rotation of the deaf thigh lower, that's this thing, which is just its parent, really. And it copies that rotation on the y-axis a bit extra, and then it copies it at a 0.6. So it's not full. If I reduce it, you can see what would happen if I didn't do anything. It looks like that, and this is about what it is here. So that is kind of the difference there. It makes it look better in uh, this area. Well, let's play that one more time. Watch the watch her thigh here as I go. So zero influence, it's a little bit squashy in the wrong way, to full influence, it kind of goes over here. So that is that copy rotation. But what is the other thing it does? It stretches to the knee, deaf knee. Now, this is similar to the concept we just saw in the elbows where the, the equivalent would be if this bone was doing like the elbow, it would be pointing to this bone down here and moving in between. But the knee is so large, this deaf knee bone that is similar to the elbow bone in between, um, it is so large that I can just have this bone stretch to that and move up and down. So what ends up happening is here where her leg is fully bent, the head tail of where it stretches to is almost zero, right? So if I go uh, take a look, uh, this is her left knee we're looking at, right? So if I go to some pose where her left knee is straight, uh, where is the pose where her left knee is straight? Oh, here we go. Then you can see the head tail is one, right? And so this goes from basically zero to one all the way across. So what does that driver look like? It's, there's a knee variable that is the angle between the thigh and shin, which if you just watch the elbow setup, you'll recognize as a very common construct. And then I'm going from zero to one, but um, I'm doing it by taking three, subtracting that knee, and then taking that whole thing and multiplying it by, or dividing it by two, multiplying it by 0.5. So what this means is it can go from zero to one, and then the value is going to be this math formula, three minus knee times a half. And so as the knee bends quite a lot, three minus that becomes a very small number. As the knee is straightened out a lot, three minus knee becomes a very uh, large number, and it becomes close to three, because as the knee is straightened out, that knee variable becomes zero. And we multiply it by a half just to kind of get it you know, into the range that we want it to be. And so this will cause it basically, as her knee is fully bent, it'll, pre it'll press the front part of this by rotating this up and pointing it to here. I do have some volume variation here. Probably it doesn't make a huge difference, but it makes enough of a difference that I like the way it looks here. Volume variation 0.3, don't want too much here. Because 
we also modify the volume using drivers. So the X scale, that's just this direction, has also a driver on it. Like the other driver we just saw, it's based on knee. Knee is the angle between shin and thigh. Okay, so what is this formula? Again, this is a this is we're modifying uh, scale, so we're going to add or subtract from one. So one plus some value, knee minus 0 0.16, 1 1.6, knee minus 1.6, and we're going to say, okay, well if it's if it ever gets uh, below zero, we don't want it to do that. So it's always going to be one plus something. It's never going to be one minus something. So it's always going to be uh, one or more. And what is the amount more? Knee minus 1.6 but we're multiplying all that by 0.25, which is a quarter, right? So what that's going to do then is, if you follow that formula exactly, that's just gonna make the X scale end up being, well, when it's fully bent, about 1.3, and when it's straight, it's going to be one, because it can't get less than, it cannot get less than uh, this formula. <laughs> this formula can't get less than zero, because it's the max of zero on that. Okay, so that's the X scale. What is the, what's also going on is the Y and Z location. So Z location in this case is up, and down, but like this direction, or when she's standing up forward and back. And so that uh, Z location, let's look at the driver here. It's the same thing, shin and thigh, give this knee variable. It's actually a very similar formula to that um, other X um, scale. Uh, what we're doing is we're saying it can never be less than zero. We're gonna take the knee value, subtract 2.25, and multiply all that by negative 0.055. Why do we multiply that by negative 0.055? I guess because I was lazy and didn't want to, uh, didn't want to multiply this whole thing by negative one. So you would probably, to make this a little more clear, multiply all this by negative one. It ends up being the exact same thing, but it's just a little more clear what you're doing here. So I fixed that in that case. And I'm going to go ahead and fix it on the other side while I'm here. Here's the other one. Z, negative one times all that. Okay, back to this one again, back to our tutorial. Um, so also the Y location, oh right, the Z location, it moves this. This just means where our leg is bent. Not only does the front side move up because of that stretch two constraint, but the back side also moves up as that calf presses in there and pushes all that meat and fat and everything up. But it also moves on its Y axis. What direction is it moving? 0.03, it's moving in a positive direction. And positive in this case is towards her knee. Negative is away from her knee. Positive is this way. And so uh, let's again take a look at the formula. Again, we're doing the knee. It's the angle between the shin and the thigh. What are we doing here? We're taking knee, we're subtracting 0.1, multiplying it by a very small value, 0.05. And so what this just basically means is as her uh, knee fully bends like this, that it, it moves this direction. So it's like that thigh, or that calf is kind of pressing the thigh sort of up and forward, I guess. Uh, yeah, up and forward, and I guess if she was standing, it would still be up and forward, but just forward and up instead. Um, so this gets that, uh, gets that um, thigh kind of all up here and pressed and gives all that nice um, meat and flesh look of that bent knee. It's really, really just gorgeous. We gotta, we gotta love that. Now, that is, the, that is the, the bone, but what are all these other three bones? Well, if you look at them, these, they have also Y, uh, you know, drivers on the Y scale, but they have no constraints and no other thing. They're just children of this main one, but we also are like wanting them to scrunch up a bit more on, the, on this area and this area. So let's take a look at that. So what we're doing with that is again, we're taking the knee, which is the angle between the, th the, shy, the, the thigh and the shin, and we're saying, uh, oh, and again, this is a scale formula, right? So on scale formulas, we're adding and subtracting from one. So we take one, we subtract any, it can never be lower than zero, so it's some amount we're gonna subtract. It's going to be knee minus 0 1, 1.6 times 0.35. And what that just does is take uh, that knee, subtract out that value, and make it about a third of its original size. What that ends up doing is just making it so when her knee is fully bent, the Y scale is about 0.5. It's about half of what its original length was. And if we straighten that out, then you can see it is 1. It is the full length. So this is so when her knee is bent, all this kind of compresses in the, the length direction here and becomes uh, smaller. And that is a little bit physically correct. There are muscles in there that would bunch up like that, so that is totally fine. Um, it actually does work about that way. We do the same thing on the outside. So if we look at this on the outside, we look at the uh, driver, you can see it's the exact same formula. These two are both children of this one, so they also inherit the X and scale and the Y and uh, Z location modifications that this one does, but they just inherit it by virtue of being children of that bone. So the final bit of this thigh squish is this thigh squish front here. And this is just a way of uh, me not wanting to do weight painting. It's because I pair it with automatic weights, sometimes I have to have weird constructs. So again, this one is just a child of thigh squish mane. Uh, it's the front side of the thigh, and it just allows that the meat and fat on the 
front side of the thigh to move along with it. If I didn't have this here, then only the thigh bone here would have the weight of all this on the front, and so it would be kind of flat and weird here. So that just is the trick to keep me from having to do any weight painting. Again, if you're a weight painting guru, just grab this bone back here, paint some weight on the front side, and you'll be good to go. All right, so that's it for the thigh portion of the knee. Another thing we've got is the patella. Um, and actually, let's look at the knee itself for just a second. So there is a bone here that goes from the middle of the thigh down to the knee, which we mentioned at the very start. Then there's this deaf knee that goes between it and the shin area down here. And so again, like the elbow, this is because the knee has a lot of movement of the bones around the other bones. And so this gives some extra radius to that spin. So I don't wanna connect these two directly together. It'll uh, cause this area to deform poorly. Um, and then the only other thing to beyond that to make the knee look correct is having a patella bone here. So the patella, if we look uh, on a straight, it's the kind of top of the bulge of the knee. So the patella actually, I think, is a little bit bigger and longer than this, but uh, this captures enough of the weight here being where it is. So the trick about the patella is it's a little bit uh, diagonal. So I have the X is pointing forward and up a bit, and Z is pointing backward and up a bit, but neither of them is straight up and down. So I put it in, in that orientation, and then I have just a Z location a driver on it. Um, if you look at the constraints, no constraints. It's just a child of the knee, and it has this one driver on the Z location. And what is that driver? You've seen a lot of other drivers so far, it's gonna look familiar. We've got a knee formula that's the angle between the thigh and the shin, and we're taking knee minus 0.4, multiplying that by 0.012, and all that just means is that the patella is gonna move on its z-axis a bit. Um, 0.012 is not very much, and 0.4, uh, what I did is I just kind of took the values of this so that it wouldn't move uh, much or at all when her leg is straight. And so here it's moving 0.029, it's about three centimeters in the z direction. Z, if you look at this, is this way. So when her leg is bent, it kind of moves in and up a bit. Uh, it's probably not um, anatomically correct. I think it would go down and around a bit, but uh, because it's moving this direction, all that kind of the, between this and this and this, all these four bones inter interacting in this area, you end up with a reasonably nice look. And so if you didn't have this driver, uh, this knee would be much pointier and weirder. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Multiply the driver by zero. This is what it looks like if I don't have that driver. Very pointy, very weird looking. So I just add this driver in and boom, looks good. So this is the only final trick to making the front side of the knee look good. All right, so let's take a look at the final bit of what makes the whole knee section work, and that's the calf. Calf is another um, very complex muscle, uh, or bone, I guess, in this case. It is attached to the shin, so that's its parent. So it moves with the shin exactly, but it has a couple things that make it change a little bit. One is it has a stretch to this Achilles stretch target here. The Achilles stretch target is just between the ankle and the um, between the ankle and the knee. And that's this bone here, and it just kind of moves. I won't go into the drivers here because that's for later, but it just moves this direction depending on how much her ankle is uh, twisted. And so that makes it uh, that makes it so that this stretches out down here and that this stretches up here. And up here, you can see we have uh, volume variation one. We have a maintained volume on it, and that way her calf grows and shrinks depending on how much uh, this stretch to is activated. That's not really part of the knee, that's part of that calf, but you know, whatever, we cover sometimes a little extra things. So the first driver on this is the Y location. So the Y location is moving in a positive direction, and that is, if you look up here in the um, upper left here, if I move it towards the knee, it becomes negative, away from the knee, it becomes positive. So in this case, it's positive, it means it's moved away from the knee. And so why would it move away from the knee? Well, it turns out that as, that, as the knee gets kind of turned and compressed like that, this thigh and everything about it pushes that calf muscle down that direction. So this accomplishes that. So we have, again, the knee angle between the shin and the thigh. We have this formula where we're saying we want it to you know, never become less than zero, and we want knee minus two times 0.07. Okay, so that, what does that do? That means that when it's fully bent, it's about 0 0.06, like, which is what it is here. And if the knee is mostly straight, uh, the Y location is zero. It hasn't moved at all, right? Okay. Also the Z location, Z, if you look at this, you can see the little blue arrow coming off, goes up into her thigh. And so again, the Z location, if we look in the upper um, upper left corner here, and I do Z, uh, if I go in a positive direction, or towards her thigh, that becomes positive, away from her thigh becomes negative. And because this is negative, that means when her knee is bent like this, that thigh area is pushing that calf down and away, and so that moves it about two, two and a half centimeters that direction. So that's what that, driver is doing there, and here's the formula. Again, it's knee, to shin, and thigh, the angle between them. Take knee minus two, multiply by 0.03, that'll give you that range from uh, 0.025 when it's fully bent to zero when it's straightened out.